What is going on everybody? Welcome back to The Common Coder. My name is Josh and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create an SSH key and add it to your GitHub account. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> All right, so before we get started, let's go ahead and talk about what an SSH key actually is. So an SSH key stands for Secure Shell Key, and it's mainly used to authenticate and secure connections between two computers. So you're probably used to entering your username and a password to maybe log into a specific website. That is not possible when we're working with code repositories in GitHub. It used to be uh, up until about 2021. Um, but Git and GitHub both decided that they're not going to accept that form of authentication anymore, and we need to use some token-based authentication with the preferred method being an SSH key. So that is the whole purpose for this video, showing you how to create one of these SSH keys. And what it actually is, is a cryptographic key pair. So there is a public key, which is the one we are going to provide to GitHub. And then there's a private key, which stays on your computer. And so when you make that connection to GitHub, it's going to validate that the keys match, therefore uh, letting you into the system. So it's kind of a high level of what an SSH key is. So let's go ahead and dive in and see how to create one. All right, so GitHub actually has some really good documentation on this process. So what we're going to do is actually go over to the GitHub documentation, which I will provide a link down in the description. But basically, the first thing we want to do is check for any existing SSH keys that might be on our system. So if we already have one, we can go ahead and use that SSH key or we can create one specifically for use with GitHub. Either way is fine. I typically like to create one key and then use that for all the various services uh, that I'm connected to. Um, but some people like to have more than one key, so it just depends on what your goals are. So we're going to go ahead and show you how to check for a key. And like I said, you can use that one if you want, but either way, we're going to go ahead and create a new key so you can see the whole process uh, from start to finish. All right. So to check for an SSH key, we're going to go ahead and run this command in the terminal. And basically what it's going to do is list all the files that are in our .ssh directory. So your machine may or may not have this directory, depending on, you know, the state of your system. If it's brand new, you probably don't have it. If you've installed Git or Git bash, might have created this SSH directory because it installs OpenSSH in the process. Either way, we're gonna go ahead and see what's in that folder. So let's go ahead and open up a terminal and we'll make this a little bit bigger. Now, if you're on Windows, this command might be a little bit different. And one of the cool things that this documentation provides is the ability to switch uh, between your operating system. So usually it'll detect whatever system that you're on, but basically if you're on a Mac, which I am right now, it's going to be highlighted here. If you're on Windows, it'll switch the documentation for Windows. But in this case, this is going to be exactly the same. On Windows, we're gonna to wanna to use git bash to run these commands. Now I'm gonna stop here and just go over some prerequisites. So in order for any of this stuff to work, you need to make sure that number one, you have git installed. Um, and number two, you created a GitHub account. So if you haven't done either one of those things, I have uh, videos, which I will link up in the cards here in the top, or I will also link them down in the description. So check those out if you haven't done either one of those and then come back to this video so you can uh, generate your SSH key. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna switch this back to Mac. And what I'm gonna do is open up a terminal and in my terminal, I'm going to type ls dash al, which is basically going to list all of the files, even the hidden ones in this directory. And then we're going to use tilde slash dot SSH. And this is where the SSH keys get stored once they're created. So you can see here on my Mac, I do not have any such file or directory. So I need to go ahead and generate an SSH key. So if you have a listing of files here and you see something that either looks like ID RSA or ID EC DSA or ID 25519, you can use one of those keys. The preferred one is going to be this ED25519 because the RSA protocol is uh, deprecated. And so we can actually see that here. It says RSA keys with a valid after before November 2nd, 2021 may continue to use this signature algorithm. RSA keys generated after that date must be using this SHA-2 signature algorithm. Some older clients may need to be upgraded in order to use these. So it's just a general best practice not to use the RSA key anymore and use one of these other protocols. So in this case, we're gonna be using the ED25519. All right, so I don't have any keys, so I can go ahead and skip to the next step, which is to generate my key. All right, so we'll go ahead and open up the terminal again and go ahead and, and generate our key. So we're gonna run ssh-keygen and then dash T, and then ED25519. All right, then we're gonna type dash capital C, and then provide the email address to our GitHub account. So in this case, mine is the common 
coder at gmail.com. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. All right, you can see it says generating public private ED25519 key pair. Enter the file where we want to save the key. So we'll go ahead and accept the default here. And then it's creating my SSH directory. Now it's going to ask you for a passphrase. Now I am not going to provide a password here because if you provide a password, then each time you make a connection to Git. So if you're pushing files up to GitHub or pulling files down from GitHub, it's going to ask you for a password each time you do that. So uh, to kind of skip that, I'm going to go ahead and just leave this password blank. Um, however, if you have other security needs and you want to provide a password or need to provide a password, you're going to go ahead and enter that here. Just make sure you remember what it is, because as far as I know, there's no way to figure out what that password is. You're going to have to generate a new SSH key if you forget that password. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and then enter the same passphrase again. I didn't enter anything, so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter again. And then it tells me my identification has been saved in that directory. So it creates my key and then it creates my public key so this is the private key this is the public key and it tells me what the fingerprint is and some random image art and other kind of stuff so our key has been created now now what we need to do is copy the key and add it to github but before we can do that we need to make sure we add our key to our ssh agent and make sure that that ssh agent is running so to do that we can look at this section here which is adding your SSH key to the SSH agent. So basically this agent is what manages the keys and helps manage those connections to uh, whatever you're trying to connect to. In this case, we're going to be connecting to GitHub. So what we need to do inside of our terminal here is run eval. And then in quotes, we're going to run dollar sign SSH agent dash S and then closing quote. And then we should see something like agent PID 2274. So whatever process this is running on, that's what this number will be. So don't worry if that doesn't match uh, what you're seeing on this web page here. All right, and once we've done that, we can go ahead and run the SSH add command. So if we scroll down a little bit farther, we can see we're gonna run SSH dash add tilde, which is my root folder, and then slash dot SSH slash ID underscore ED 25519. All right, we can see that the identity was added with my email address. All right, so now that we've created our SSH key, it's time to go ahead and copy that key and add it to GitHub. So to copy the key, uh, I've navigated over to this add a new SSH key to your account. And down here, step one is to copy the SSH public key to our clipboard. So the public key again is the one that ends in .pub. And on a Mac, we're gonna go ahead and run the pb copy command and then uh, pass it the name of the file name and it's going to copy that into our clipboard. Now on Windows, this command's going to be a little bit different. If we scroll up to the top and then click to the Windows documentation, the Windows command in this case is going to be clip. So instead of pb copy, it's going to be clip and then we're going to pipe the contents of that file into the clipboard. All right, so same idea, just instead of using pb copy, you're going to use clip. So let's go ahead and open up a terminal here. And what we'll do is go ahead and say pb copy. And then we'll use the less than character and then the path to our file. So it's going to be tilde slash dot ssh slash id underscore ed25519 dot pub. All right, and that's going to copy the contents of that file into the clipboard, and then I can paste it into GitHub. All right, so now that we have our key copied, we can go ahead and head over to GitHub. So right here, I am logged into GitHub, and what I need to do is go ahead and click on my avatar up here on the right-hand corner. Go ahead and click on Settings. And then over here in the left sidebar, we're going to click on SSH and GPG keys. And up here at the very top, you can see we have this section for SSH keys. And what we can do is go ahead and click this green new SSH key button. And this will give us a place to go ahead and enter our SSH key. So right here in the key section, we're gonna go ahead and paste in our key. And then the type, we're gonna go ahead and leave it alone. It's gonna be authentication key. And then we're gonna give it a title. And so for the title, what I like to do here is provide the name of the machine that the key belongs to. So every machine that you wanna to connect to your GitHub account, that is going to need to have its own SSH key. So in this case, I'm on a MacBook Air. So I will go ahead and just say Josh MacBook Air. And this way I know that this is my MacBook Air. If I have another computer that I wanna to connect to my GitHub account to work with the code there, I can go ahead and provide the name of that computer as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click add SSH key. And now you can see that this key has been added. It was added on this date and it's got some other information here. But as of right now, we are set up and ready to go.
All right, so the last thing we need to do here is go ahead and test our SSH key connection to make sure that things are working. And that is very, very easy to do. In the terminal again, what we're gonna do is go ahead and run this command called ssh-t and then git at github.com. All right, and you can see that it takes just a second and it'll tell you the authenticity of host github.com can't be established. It recognizes that I do have a fingerprint there. This key is not known by any other names. Are you sure you want to continue connecting? So we'll go ahead and type yes. And then it says permanently added github.com to the list of known hosts. And then it tells me, hi, the common coder, you've successfully authenticated, but GitHub does not provide shell access. So this is fine. This is what we're expecting here. You can see that in the documentation right down here at the bottom. And as long as we have not received this permission denied, we are ready to go uh, and start working with GitHub. And so where this is used is inside of your GitHub account. Let's go back to my main homepage, click up here, actually go to my repositories. And I don't have any repositories here. So if I create one, I'm just go ahead and create one and I'll just call this demo repository. And I'm just gonna leave this blank. I'm gonna make it a public repository. I'm gonna go ahead and add a readme file and then click create repository. And you can see here that it's created my repository. I have one commit, which is the addition of the readme file. And if I click on this green code button, you can see that if I wanted to clone this repository, which means I want to bring it down to my machine and work with it locally, I have a couple different options to do that, but the main one here is SSH, and this is uh, what we want to go ahead and use. So if I go ahead and copy this to the clipboard, go back to my terminal, and I'm going to navigate to a folder called code. So I'm just gonna clear this out, say CD code, and then if I type git clone, and then paste in that repository address, when I hit enter, it's telling me cloning into demo repository and notice how it didn't ask me to provide any uh, authentication or anything like that. It used my SSH key to make the connection. And because I have my private key on my machine and the public key on GitHub, it made that connection, didn't have to provide any password. And I'm good to go as far as working with this repository or any other repositories that I might have in my account. All right, well, that's gonna go ahead and do it for this video. If you've been following along with any of my other videos, we now have all the skills that we need to go ahead and start working with Git and GitHub. So we can now take our local projects and push them up to GitHub, or we can create a new uh, repository and project in GitHub and bring that down to our machine. So in a future video, we're gonna go ahead and show how to do exactly that. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. So thank you so much for coding along with me today. If you enjoyed this video and found this information valuable, please leave me a like down below. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. We're gonna be learning a lot more about Git, GitHub, web development, and everything in between. So if that's what you're into, please consider subscribing for more videos just like this one. All right, well, until next time, be sure to stay curious, never stop learning, and I will see you all in the next video.